Hi everyone, uh, Jim McHugh here. Uh, check out my interview at IndieBuddy.com. Well, nothing really, it wasn't premeditated at all. It was just um, the way it came about. In essence, um, the songs, I suppose, were, were all put together within a short space of time, within about maybe two, two or three months. You know, I had all of those eight songs, probably more uh, collection of songs. And it was just what I was playing at that, that moment in time. Um, and it just kind of happened to be sort of more of a rock in the sort of a phase. Um, uh, and it, that's just the way it was. And that, that's just what, what I, I was into at, at that moment in time. I suppose previ prior to that, I had I have two albums, um, Noise Machine and My Nuclear Radio. And I think like while I suppose My Nuclear Radio was probably more folk or folk indie um influences uh would obviously with some, with some rock but this album here is definitely much much more uniform i think in in terms of the consistent sound now there are some soft songs on it as well it's not completely rock but it's definitely a more homogenous blend and i think that's that's because um of the way we put it together of the way the songs were in that short time shot within time um, and just the way we were playing as a band, you know. Those pretending to wake up is kind of um, ironic, you know, because it's it's nearly impossible to pretend to wake up. And the, the, the line actually came from a song that didn't make the album. Um, and I suppose it was more about watching politicians and watching the falseness of interactions of the greeting of people greeting each other um shaking hands with big smiles and the line the line was in the song was um delighted to meet you pretending to wake up so in essence it was saying i'm delighted to meet you but i don't really care i'm just posing here for a photograph with you while i shake your hands um and i suppose it's a deeper meaning if you go into then of the all of the all of the i suppose uh, inaccuracies, all of the mistreat that you get from politicians and the, should I say, the crap that you're being fed on a daily basis, you know, to, for one, from one thing to another. And I suppose pretending to wake up is a pose, not suppose, but it is for everybody to to wake up and, you know, do your own reading and become, you know, your own counsel at times and not to obviously believe everything you read on Facebook. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's an ode to that. The, the, the way I write songs, and it's pretty much consistent for, for all of my songs, um, is the riff just comes about while I'm kind of just jamming on my own. Um, and that happens uh, for all of my songs. And then I kind of, I suppose, put the lyrics and, and put the ideas around that then. And that's just generally on my own. And then when I go to rehearse with, with the lads, um, we, we sort of work it out from there. Like I have pretty much 95% of it in my head the way I want it. But the, the, lads, the lads may say, you know, maybe maybe this part would work better, another section or the tempo doesn't suit, you know, or um, that way. But that's the way I generally work it. Um, I work it to something that can inspire me on the guitar or on the piano or the mandolin or whatever I'm banging at, you know. Um, it's not really a premeditated at all. I don't sit down and go, I'm going to write a rock song. <laughs> and then I just kind of always hope and be lucky so far that some sort of a lyric will jump into my head, such as uh, Dave or Hey Jimbo. Yeah, so... Um, it's uh and I try, you know, to, to not to be to try not to go down the same route as every other conventional song. So I am trying to steer off the the main path and stop writing songs that say, you know, I love you and I miss you so much and um <laughs> I can't live without you. <laughs> but <laughs> listen, maybe I should write songs like that, but here um I'd rather write songs about an obscure person called Dave. Or some kind of, you know, song looking into myself with Hey Jimbo, you know. Yeah, I, I intentionally kept kept it eight tracks for this album. The previous, the two albums, the first album was 12 tracks, the second album was 11. Um, I don't know, I just found that sometimes 
the, the latter tracks on an album can get lost and albums are losing I suppose over, from the last number of years anyway more more you know um, people obviously focus more on singles and they just want to be hit with the single so I intentionally kept it to eight tracks and obviously I had about I could have had maybe 15 to 20 tracks to be working on at that time um, but with lockdown came a good opportunity to be uh, especially in the earlier stages uh, to, to practice as a band and to really get familiar with the songs and to feel comfortable with them and, and to try out ones that worked and ones that possibly didn't feel as you know as strong about some song some songs i usually you know give it a couple of weeks and the song still if you still feel very strongly about it then in my heart i know it's 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 the song that i'm i'm going to stand over um so picking those songs it's nice to have a good a good choice to work through but it, it just flowed well as a band and i really wanted a full band sound on this so and it was great that all the lads played on every track on it um and i just just feel like you know it's as much as my name is on the album, but it's definitely, uh, you know, between Paul and Cabe on bass and Butch and drums. And then we worked with our producer, Alex Borwick, so he'd really, you know, really strong input into the recording process, into the arrangements, into, you know, good ideas when we were recording it. So, um, but yeah, you're right. It doesn't, the two tracks definitely, it's, it's, it's there's a lot more depth in, in the album, I think, in terms of, um meaning and in, in some of the other slower songs more heartfelt songs that it's not all just about a you know like hey jimbo or dave is kind of getting the hook straight you know getting getting straight to the point essentially so i think in some of the other songs we build it up we you know we we, we try to infuse other elements yeah just it, it's essentially again that's just sort of the way it came about but for that song um we used another guitar player for the for the main guitar uh, riffs, uh, another guitar player called Paul Sherry. So I had it down in the studio that day. Um, we had the bones of all the song down and the acoustic guitar, which is, uh, I just wanted to leave it at that and leave it very flat sounding jazzy. And then Paul came in and added the lovely jazz guitar over it. And, and that really brings the song up to a, a new level. Um, and we're very fortunate as well that Alex Borwick, the producer, is a trombone player. So he adds all the trombone to it. So yeah, it's got a real jazz feeling, and uh, I know my wife said to me like, you know, it's why are you telling people to shut them out? You know, it's you know, it's a bit rude, something. But uh, it's again, it's 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 irony, you know. It's it's fun. It's uh, you know, shut your mouth, stop complaining, get up and dance, and have a good time, you know. So in essence, it's kind of saying, I suppose you can take it anyway. You could say it. Um, for the whole pandemic, you know, okay, it's, it's a very serious time, but just try and live your life, you know, as much as you can. Easier said than done, I agree, but um, try and live your life and, 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 you know, don't put everything on hold and, and stop watching the news, you know, all the time. So, cheers. Um, again, that's probably looking at the political spectrum again. Um, I'm not very, you know, I don't talk a lot about politics or that, but I do, it does, I suppose, annoy me about, you know, how false it all comes across at times, and especially watching, you know, the Trump um, election campaign and all of that, and I suppose it was kind of with, with somebody like that in mind, you know, telling them, you know, you're such a guy, you're just trying to feed, you know, feed people's anger and feed, you know, disillusionment everywhere, and when you're in such power and you have such scope for the, around the world, like why could you not, you know, portray a more positive image and bring out the best in humankind as opposed to, you know, just the the horrible, I don't know, attitude that some people have. But here. again, it's it's yeah, it's full of irony. It's full of mischief. I would say um, things like that. And I intentionally, as you say, don't miss. Try not to mince my words but i do try and get a reaction so if you hear a line and sometimes when i'm writing it I, say, oh, well, I, should, I don't know if i should really put that down but i try and go with my gut as much as i can and say listen go for it and i, I try not to refine the lyrics at times i know you can spend ages refining and trying to write and trying to rhyme and you know but i think it's a bit of fun as well when you can suggest lines and 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 you know, people will, will perk up and did he really say that or did I imagine he said that? 
in the studio that's a really interesting song and i think um for anyone who's who's musically or, or technically into drumming if if they listen to the beat of that um they notice that for each verse the drum pattern changes um and again that was between alex borwick our producer who's phenomenal on on in terms of his knowledge on all of the instruments but in drums particularly and he's not even a drummer but he worked with our drummer and gave him the the ideas of you know playing it different for each verse and then i think it builds up into a more i suppose conventional song towards the end you know in terms of a build up and you can say oh i know where this is going now you know but i suppose we just wanted to bring that and bring that whole build up and crescendo to a full full maximum and uh i think it really worked well you know um and it's really interesting to hear people's feedback on, on the songs and which they thought was a contender because i reached I reached out to a lot of friends and i gave them the album before we picked any single to see which one did they think would would work best you know and it was amazing the difference and um, and at the start, I was kind of a little bit thrown back a bit because I thought people would all come back generally one or two main ones. But a lot of people picked so many different songs off it. And I was thrown back in one way, but then on the other way, I said, well, hopefully that's a good sign that um, when you reach out to people for their honest feedback, who people who you can trust, who will tell you, you know, um, what they really think. So, her, yeah, my brother picked Her Love, actually. It's, he thought that was the song to go with, but hey. Get overruled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that song, I suppose, in in essence, over with the mu musical part with that song is trying to hint at, I suppose, the life being sucked out of Dublin and the time. Um, there was a lot in the media around the time that artists couldn't survive in Dublin, and a lot of them were moving out because it's getting too far too expensive. Like, how could you? try and, uh, and, and be an artist and live in Dublin um, with, with, with house prices and obviously the, 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 the increase in rents all of the time. Um, and then at the whole corporate world, you know, it's becoming more and more of a multinational um, company, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, the, the influx of people and, and the high wages they can obtain and, and then the artists are all being pushed out. So that was the meaning of the song in some ways was that you know, it's a virtual bomb drop. You've been hit, bang, and the whole life and arts, arts has been thrown out of the city. Um, musical, musicality, yes, we, we, we went for it. Um, and particularly, you know, at the end where we, we did a talking piece, you know, with the slight distortion on the voice and talking through it that way. So I was trying to, I know I was just had it in my head, some whipping boy or some 90s bands, you know, Irish bands, the way they used to do that. So, um, but, yeah, that could be another single we might might look to after the album is released, maybe to, to put that one out, possibly, you know. Um, that's, that was sort of high on the list as well. <laughs> but I've been trying to really work on the 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 rhythmic elements, you know, and so busted by the pain and busted by, the, you know, the intonations of that. And at times it doesn't really matter what the words, what actually the word means, you know, sometimes it's just... I have the, the intonation or, or the rhythm of the word and I just want to get that across. Um, and, and Dave was just the idea in my head about, you know, being 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 young and silly and, and going into houses and maybe doing illegal drugs and all this sort of stuff, which is, you know, crazy, you know, who, who'd be doing those things? But um, that was just in the head and can being busted by the cops. Like, you know, it's just silliness. And then Dave is just, oh, Dave, you know, it's like, I was, I was just, saying someone else it's kind of like watching why you know and the guys from Monty Python why did they pick the name Brian for the life of Brian you know and Brian was kind of you know I remember watching uh, John Cleese and he was saying oh Brian was just kind of dull and boring any Brian you've ever met you know <laughs> so, so I was just trying to think of some of a similar name like Dave you know Dave was the, the guy I was getting into trouble so that was Dave but yeah it's, it's more fun you know and just trying to create imagery around it and, and as you say, it's trying and, and fit a story then around that of a misspent youth and of uh, getting in trouble and, you know, making your mistakes when you're young and, 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 and doing all of that. So, um, but that, that again is probably a folk thing as well, you know, of, you know, folk and storytelling and 
Um, so each song tells its own story, and uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully I don't confuse people too much with uh, the meaning of the songs. <laughs> of course, yeah, it's just really hard to try and, you know, get an, a sense of when you can get out and what the landscape will be like at this moment in time. It's very difficult, and but we can just hope. You know, it's 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 a huge element, and obviously it's a huge thing for an album launch. That when you do your album launch, that's you know where you get the a huge momentum just from playing them live, and then even shipped in CDs and 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 selling vinyl and, and and you know t-shirts and all that stuff. When people come to a gig and they enjoy it, they'll, they'll do all that, and that that's all been taken away. But um, yeah, we'll be itching to get back out when whenever we can, whether that be. I don't know, late summer or the end of the year or next year. So we'll just have to wait. Or we could have another album out by then, you know. Do you know, I, I find it hard to write when I have something um, like this happening at the minute, when I have single releases. I don't know, it must take up more of my brain. I must have limited brain power in terms of what I can focus on. So I am writing uh, a little bit, but if I didn't have the... Um, the release i think i'd be focusing more on it i think it just takes up more of my i suppose my off time than thinking about a oh, single release you know how can i plug it more where do i share it and do all that social media stuff and then um well if i didn't have that i think i'd be just sitting there playing guitar but i am playing playing music i've started um you know going back to the piano um, and trying to learn more on it and then even just going back to the basics of, of guitar playing you know I've actually really enjoyed going back to the the basic elements of, of rudimentary scales and, and all of that and just trying to instead of picking up a completely different new instrument and giving myself a ridiculous objective of you know um just going back to what what I can play and try and see if I can uh, play it any better you know and you know um, I suppose that and that that's the benefit as well when you when when I work with good musicians like on the album like um, like Butch or, or Paul and Cave on bass or Paul Sherry on guitar or Alex even like it kind of makes you realize you know where your weaknesses are in terms of mus musicianship so it actually also gives you you know a kick up to behind to say well you need to you need to buck up here you know these guys are at this level and you're you know dragging them down <laughs> so it puts it in the back of your mind. That, Oh yeah, I need to get better at times, you know. So it's okay. It's good. It's good to um, give you an idea of, of where you are, and to um, and it's nice to have that time then where you can go back and, and, and look at those things and figure it out, you know. I'd say first of all, follow your heart and don't be afraid to take risks. Um, definitely do that. But I would also reach out for advice and reach out to people uh, who might be just you know, a year or two on the road themselves and, and find out where they've made their mistakes or where, where they find, you know, their success and what can work. Um, I wouldn't jump straight into a, looking to record a full 12 track album. I would tell them to focus on making home demos, even with your phone and, and recording equipment and now is getting so much more available that you can do a lot of home demos and then pick one or two songs and then bring them to somebody, a good a good producer and try and do a really good job on that. Um, and enjoy the process as much as you can and do not and accept that you're going to be rejected uh, majority at 90, 99% of the time. Um, but it's, if you keep at it, there's always, uh, there's always a window there and there, there will be that 1% and that opens up then you'll be and be sorted so yeah it's very it's very really difficult very difficult business and especially if you're intending to make um, any money from it you know any return then that's that's a different but if you can go in with the mindset that you're going to enjoy it um then it's, it's definitely very rewarding to get your music out there and to get it recorded um i'm from on and i read a, a year or two ago i read patrick Kavanagh's biography and i remember him saying that when he was starting out writing poetry like he was he, he never received any formal education and he was sitting in his farmhouse in monaghan looking out the fields and writing his own poetry and he sent one his first poem off to the whatever the national paper was where it had the poet's corner in it and he received a rejection letter 
straight away from it. And when I read this in his in his biography, I thought, oh, he's gonna like, you know, he's gonna like, I was thinking he'd be so annoyed about this. But he was actually elated because it confirmed his status then as a poet. So he said, they've sent him back a letter and, and said, no, it's not. But in his mind, he was saying, they recognize me as a poet. This is amazing. So it was fascinating as well that he, he took that on board, you know. So I think musicians should take, should take that as well. That if somebody reviews your record or, or your album and gives you, you know, bad review, listen, so what? You know, it's their taste, but you've you've established yourself as a, you know, singer or songwriter or something, you know. So it's, you have to accept it and you do need thick skin. Yeah, definitely. And I suppose it's one thing about getting bad reviews, but you also had to expect no, no correspondence or no feedback as well. And so you have to keep plugging away, you know. Well, it's really uh, leading up now, just uh, the single Hey Jimbo was out, so trying to keep plugging that at the minute. Um, and then the album launch will be launched and uh, released at the end of May, 28th of May. Um, and then we'll try and plan some kind of a, I don't know, a virtual live show or something around that uh, at that, that at that stage. And then it's it'll probably be more been back to uh, repeating the cycle again towards the end of the year, I hope. You know, try and come up with some new songs and, and something to spark our, uh, our interest again and, and, you know, see what we can do. But uh, we're still, still rocking away and just enjoying it. And ideally, we can go out and play live, hopefully. You know. um, I really hope so. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's been brilliant. Yeah. And thanks for all your support so far. Um, really appreciate it.